In this video, we'll use a feature on the At Games Legends 4KP called the General Loader to run our own programs. I will demonstrate how to build them yourself and create your own using AI or more specifically ChatGPT. While this video is a bit technical, it can be fun to learn something new. I'm John and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. If you simply want to try the example programs without completing this guide, I'll quickly show you how to do that. Visit wagnerstechtalk.com forward slash ALGL. From the table of contents, select Q&A. Question number two is, can I quickly try the example applications without the full tutorial? The answer is yes. Simply click the external.zip file to download the example programs. Insert your FAT32 or XFAT formatted USB stick into your computer, extract the external.zip file, and then copy the external subfolder to the root of the USB stick. Insert the USB stick to the blue USB 3.0 port on the right, then navigate CE4K until you see external applications, and then launch one of the applications you want to try. If you want to learn how to build these applications yourself, I hope you'll watch the rest of this video. In the VirtualBox Ubuntu setup video, we had created a shared folder called VBox Share, which is shared between both Windows and Ubuntu. If we select SF underscore VBox Share, we can see there is nothing there currently. By the end of this video, it will contain executable code that we can run on the Legends 4KP. We covered updating Ubuntu in the setup video, so make sure Ubuntu is up to date before proceeding. If the software updater notifies you of any updates, go ahead and install them. Keep in mind, you may be asked to restart once complete. To get started, I'll bring up the Firefox browser and visit wagnerstechtalk.com forward slash ALGL, which will guide us through all of the steps. If you don't already have Ubuntu running on your machine, you can follow the link to the virtual machine guide that will walk you through the setup of getting Ubuntu up and running on your PC. Once you've done that, come back to this video. Let's assume that has already been done at this point and proceed. The Install Build Tools section briefly describes some of the main software components that will be used to build the example applications. Following that, we'll install Make and CMake, which allows building the application to run on the Legends platform. Open a terminal within Ubuntu and simply copy and paste each command one at a time and press enter. You will need to enter the password you created for Ubuntu during the installation and when prompted to continue, press Y. Repeat as necessary for each of the commands in this section. Next, we'll use a platform called Docker to create a container that will allow us to package up the application with all the needed libraries, dependencies, and configuration details as a single package. To begin the Docker setup, select all the text in this block and copy it to the clipboard. That is, right-click and select Copy. Moving back to the terminal, right-click, select Paste, and then press Enter. When prompted, press Y to continue. Once the Docker setup completes, we'll then install the latest Docker version. Copy the text here to install the needed Docker components and plugins. Copy it to the clipboard, and again, paste it into the terminal window, and press Enter. When prompted, press Y to continue. This step will take a little bit, so be patient. Once it completes, we'll verify that the Docker installation is working properly. Select the text to run the Docker Hello World application, copy and paste it into a terminal, and if everything is installed properly, you'll see the Hello from Docker text. If you don't, double check that both prior commands were run and were successful. Next, we'll install an IDE, or Integrated Development Environment, called VS Code or Visual Studio Code. It's a powerful code editor and one I frequently use and recommend. It allows us to easily view or change any of the example program code that we will download momentarily. To install it, click the Ubuntu software icon on the left toolbar, 
And in the top left, click the search icon. Type in VS Code, all one word, and press enter. Then click the VS Code icon and click the green install button. When prompted, enter your password for Ubuntu. Once installed, you can close out of the Ubuntu software application. I'd recommend clicking the Show Application button in the lower left, scroll to the right, and launch Visual Studio Code. Once loaded, right-click it on the left side and select Add to Favorites. This will lock it to the sidebar so it's easily accessible. We can go ahead and close VS Code for now. It's time to download the example code. Next, we'll download some example projects and build scripts that you can run, build, and deploy to your 4KP. Now don't worry, this step is actually quick and easy. If we take a look at the first point, it states to open a terminal and change the folder to VBox Share. Well, before we do that, let's take a quick look at the files application. If we look in the SF underscore VBox Share, yep, there's absolutely nothing there. We'll copy the subfolder and then paste it into the terminal and press enter. Next, we'll use the git clone command to copy the GitHub repository into that folder. Basically, what GitHub is, is a repository that stores all the code for a specific project. We're just going to simply copy it from the internet and bring it down into that subfolder. Again, just copy the command and paste it into the terminal session and press enter. The examples will then be downloaded from GitHub. If we go back to files, we'll see a new subfolder called external applications underscore SDK. This folder contains all our examples, build scripts, and everything else we need to build the applications. In the next segment, we'll add the project to VS Code and take a quick look around. If we want to examine the code that we just downloaded, we can use Visual Studio Code that we installed earlier. We'll simply specify the project folder and add the project. To do that, launch Visual Studio Code from the icon on the left, select the option Open Folder, then navigate to the SF underscore VBox Share, and then external application underscore SDK subfolder and select open. When prompted, if you trust the authors of the files, select yes, and the project will appear on the left hand side. If we expand media, we see our example applications such as hello WTT, SDL2 example, along with some additional files to help us build the example programs. For example, if we expand the Hello WTT example and look under the SRC or source subfolder, we'll see the main.cpp or C++ code. There are two additional files here, the header or main.h and the cmakelist.txt. However, the main functionality for the example resides within the main.cpp file. Programming in C++ is honestly not my forte, I've done some programming with it over the years, but not extensively. So, to create the example code for the Hello WTT example, I used artificial intelligence, and more specifically, ChatGPT. Let me explain how I did that. First of all, visit chatgpt.com. You'll then need to enter a prompt. A prompt is basically a series of statements which tell ChatGPT what you want done. For example, I used the following prompt. Create a C++ program that uses SDL2 to create a window and display a ball bouncing. Pressing any button should terminate the program. Now when I submit the prompt, ChatGPT goes on its merry way of generating the source code. After the code was generated, I created the header file and the cmakelist.txt file as found in the example. You could use this method to get a simple idea going like what was shown here. You can also copy and paste some existing code and ask ChatGPT to expand on it. Lots of possibilities if you're not a C++ programmer. Now I could spend a considerable amount of time explaining what the code is doing, but I realize that isn't practical for this demonstration. To keep this video concise, instead, I recommend checking out the key file section of the table in the written guide. There you'll find a breakdown of the main methods in the code and the associated key files. You'll find the same for the more advanced SDL2 example along with extensive comments within the code itself. If you have specific questions about the code, you can of course copy and paste that code into ChatGPT and ask it to explain it further. 
Next, we'll discuss how to build and deploy examples to the Legends platform. Before we can deploy it, we first need to build it. To do that, you may want to position the browser and the terminal session like this so you can easily copy and paste the commands. We'll start with the first command to change the directory to our VBox Share folder. Then, change the directory down one level to the external application underscore SDK folder. Next, we'll enter the command sudo, which originally stood for super user do, but instead means to switch user and do. Anyways, then enter dot forward slash run dot sh, followed by the folder name of the example. In this case, we'll build the hello-wtt example, so we'll type that. Then, just press enter. Now, the first time you run the command, it will take longer as some additional software components are downloaded and installed. It may take about three minutes or more, but subsequent builds will be much faster. Once the build completes, we can open the files again, navigate to our VBox share, then external applications underscore SDK folder, then media, our hello WTT project folder, and then USB. In that folder, we'll now see three files. The hello-wtt.elf file is the actual executable code for our program. The hello-wtt.png file is the image that will appear when we select it from within CE4K. And the XML file identifies the name of the program that the user will see. Now, if you want to rebuild the project again, there is a command to delete the build folder at the bottom which is just one way to force a rebuild. Now, we'll issue the same command for the more advanced SDL2 example application and go ahead and build it. If we look under the USB folder for this application, we'll see an additional folder called RES for resources. We'll need to copy everything in this subfolder to our USB stick as well. In the next segment, we'll copy our files to a USB stick and then move over to the 4KP and check out our work. To try out the example applications, you'll need a USB stick, such as this generic 64GB stick. Go ahead and plug it into the PC that is running Ubuntu. Now we need to set up the USB stick, and for this video, we'll stick with the, well, no pun intended, <laughs> the easiest method, which is to use a single partition. That is, you'll format your USB stick as either FAT32 or XFAT. If your USB stick is smaller than 32 gigabytes, Windows will give you an option for FAT32. If it's greater than 32 gigabytes, you can use XFAT, which is readable on the 4KP as well as in Windows. I've also documented a dual partition method as well, just in case you want to use one partition for flash drive X and external applications on the USB stick, it's totally up to you. Open File Explorer in Windows, right click on the USB stick and select Format. For the file system, select either XFAT or FAT32 as we discussed, then enter a volume label. I'll call it EXT Apps for external apps, then click the Start button. If you're sure you have the right drive selected, click OK. Once done, click OK again. On the left side, I have the USB stick we just formatted and on the right side, the location where VBox Share exists, and I already navigated to the external application underscore SDK and media subfolder. On the USB stick, right click and create a subfolder off the root called external. Inside the external folder, we'll create another folder called hello WTT. On the right, we'll navigate to the USB subfolder and select all three files by pressing Ctrl A, then right click, select copy, and right click on the hello WTT folder on the USB stick and select paste. We'll repeat the same for the SDL2 example by creating the subfolder, select all the files including the RES subfolder, right click and drag the files into the SDL2 example subfolder on the USB stick and select copy here. That's it. You can safely eject the USB stick and now we'll move over to the Legends 4KP and try it out. At the back of the 4KP, take your USB stick and plug it into the blue USB 3.0 port at the right. When you plugged in the USB stick, a new option was added. 
you can navigate the menu until you see external applications. Here we see the ball, which is our Hello WTT application. Press Start or A on the arcade control panel to launch it. You'll then see a Pong style ball bouncing around the display. While this is meant as primarily a Hello World type of program, which is a common term used by developers learning a new system, what we've done here is pretty impressive. With little to no C++ programming expertise, we were able to leverage ChatGPT to run on the Legends 4KP. I'll press the At Games or Home button to exit. We can then switch over to the more advanced SDL2 example. When the application starts up, it provides the basic rules of the game. I'll rotate the screen a little bit so you can see more of the game. Then press A or Start to begin. We'll use the D-pad or the joystick to navigate the snake. It's very challenging. You'll notice at the top, it also shows not only your score, but also keeps track of the high score along with a timer. This application provides a more comprehensive example of a simple yet fun game to help you create even more advanced projects. When done playing, you can then press the At Games or Home button to exit. So there you have it. We just learned how to do something pretty exciting. Building applications using AI to show a ball bouncing on the screen. We also learned how to build a more advanced program that demonstrates a complete example of a game running on the 4KP. I hope you are able to take these examples and come up with some awesome new applications for the Legends platform. As more applications are created and made public, I'll add them to this guide for others to try out. If you found this video informative, please let me know by clicking the like button. And if you haven't already subscribed, it's free, and I hope you'll consider doing so. And with that, I look forward to talking with you again very soon.